Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as now it's time for today's Toy of the Week video. So the internet has been all a bit of a flurry recently, as there's been a new toy reveal. Well, I'm sure there's been more than one, but it is actually a specific example that I'm thinking of. Uh, anyway, it's caused enough comment online that I figured I'd bump the topic that I had originally planned to be talking about today, uh, and take the opportunity to instead tell you about something very exciting that I just happen to have in my collection that ties in quite nicely, as you'll see. Now, the new toy I'm thinking of is, of course, Takara Tomy Generation Selects God Neptune, which is the combined form of the five Beast Wars second Seacons. In keeping with tradition, it's a repaint of King Poseidon, the original toy of which featured during Takara's Master Force line back in the 80s, although most Western fans might know it better as Piranacon. Sadly, I haven't experienced the Generations toy myself, but I have heard from plenty of people that it's a lot of fun, uh, and that it's a worthy update of the original, which is great as I was always a big fan. However, as it happens, I did pick up a box copy of the original Beast Wars Second God Neptune gift set some time ago, uh, and I've been kind of waiting for the right opportunity to give it a proper once over. Well, now's the time, so let's take a look and see what this guy is all about. God Neptune was originally released in 1998 during Takara's Beast Wars Second line and was only available as a five pack gift set. God Neptune himself is the combined form of the Beast Wars Second Seacons, a bunch of nefarious space pirates who are pretty much out for themselves and their own financial gain. The Seacons feature fairly prominently in the accompanying cartoon and provide a decent mix of credible threat and light hearted comedy with a couple of their lineup really making the most of their moments in the spotlight during the show's ongoing storyline. They're some of the most ridiculous characters to be found in the cartoon, which is already saying something, as they take the concept of officially formed robot pirates quite literally to provide a level of entertainment that is hardly your typical Transformers fare. For one thing, they're notorious for sailing through space aboard an actual pirate ship alongside plenty of other stereotypical activities that make them stand out almost as figures of fun. Still, when the time comes, they're also quite adept at proving themselves on the battlefield providing a very definite threat for Lyo Convoy's Maximals whenever they clash, and especially so when they combine to form the powerful God Neptune. The Big Fish himself is notable for being one of the most intelligent combiners throughout Transformers history, although he's also arguably one of the smallest, with the Gestalt form seeming to vary in height, but typically not appearing quite as vast as examples from other media. You still wouldn't want to mess with him, though. <laughs> The God Neptune toy is a repaint of the original Piranacon mold, itself released 10 years prior in 1988 during Generation 1. The Takara version was known as King Poseidon and was released as part of the Master Force line. That release was made up of six individual Seacons, using the classic Scramble City method of a larger torso robot and small swappable limbs, although this time with the twist of having an additional team member to form a Target Master style weapon. The Beast Wars second release slims the team down by one and omits the original Nautilator mold, but there's still more than enough inside the box here to get you excited. The designs are identical to their original release, but now feature a uniform white, grey and gold colour scheme, with team leader Halfshell adding a fair amount of dark green to the mix in order to remain distinctive. The other toys are simple little things for the most part, but still pack bags of charm and character into their diminutive frames, each managing to feel unique versus the others. Sadly, they don't feature the individual weapons that accompanied the original release aside from Half Shell's sword, but still manage to pack a punch in terms of sheer shelf appeal, if nothing else. Ultimately, they work best as a set, 
bringing a terrific sense of presence no matter which mode they're in, and ably recalling to mind the rather idiosyncratic characters from the cartoon. First up on the roster is Sea Phantom, the most obviously brutish member of the pirate group, and one who enjoys fighting and eating above all else. He becomes the right arm of the combined god Neptune form. The toy is a repaint of G1 Overbite and transforms into a land shark, that being a shark with feet and arms that can walk around on land in case you really had to ask. Despite its absurdity, I always really enjoyed this mold and Sea Phantom's white and grey deco with a couple of red and green highlights sets it off nicely. The robot mode is very monochrome but still manages to look neat for having a kind of molded robotic ribcage set below to piercing red eyes. Next up is Seelagon, the eldest member of the group and one who fancies himself as a wise old pirate, although in reality he's played for laughs and spends most of his time sleeping. He forms the left arm of the combined mode. The toy is a repaint of G1 Scalor, which was known as Gulf in Master Force. It again features the beast mode of a monster fish with arms and legs, although it appears to be based on the coelacanth species in this case. The primary gold paint scheme on Coelagon works a treat and makes him feel very distinct in the team. I'm also a big fan of the molded detail around his eyes and the rather gruesome looking teeth. The robot mode is a bulky thing with bulbous arms and a handsome head sculpt to boot. Next, we have the young Terramander, who is the newest member of the pirate posse is also the most disrespectful as his laziness and shirking of duty make him unpopular with the rest of the team. He forms the right leg of God Neptune. Terramander is a repainted version of G1 Sea Wing, known as Kraken during Master Force. The alternate form is a monstrous manta ray, although one which has a prominent pair of legs to allow him to walk about. Those burnt yellow eyes are probably the most eye-catching part of Terramander's alternate form, although there's a lot to like generally about how this version has been repainted. His robot mode is boasting a fairly unbecoming placement of the beast mode mouth, but still manages to exude enough cool to look like he's rocking a pair of aviators. Our penultimate team member is also one of the most memorable. Scylla is a rather delusional squid, believing herself to be a great beauty despite the fact that she often scares away the object of her desire, the maximal scuba. <laughs> <laughs> she forms the left leg of the combined form, though in the cartoon she has a habit of disappearing and leaving God Neptune at a bit of a disadvantage. The toy is a repaint of G1 Tentakill and makes the most of that hideous beast face by giving it a rather ravishing pair of red lips. The robot mode is fairly nondescript in its colour scheme, but still boasts some nice gold accents and a clean design overall. Shame we never saw a Nemesis repaint of this set really, as this toy could have been known as Scylla Black. Anyway, that just leaves us with team leader Halfshell, who gets the most screen time overall and is characterised by his love of money, but also his surprising generosity towards those he considers as friends. What a dude. Halfshell is a repainted version of G1 Snaptrap, who was known as Turtler during Master Force, and he features the unmistakable alternate form of a green and white armoured turtle. Those dual shell-mounted cannons are about as subtle as the rather hideous face sculpt he has on offer, making Halfshell a much more nightmarish rendition of his beast form than you'd typically expect. I really like the colour scheme on Halfshell, with the gold paint applications going the extra mile to make him stand out as the most striking member of the team overall, in my opinion. There's also some fun to be had by cranking a small lever on his back to activate a simple motion gimmick in the guns, although it can be a little irritating trying to get them lined up neatly should you wish. The robot mode is a handsome devil of a thing, cast mostly in a sparkly dark green, although with a couple of piercing gold highlights and some rich red eyes on the face. He retains the sword accessory from Snaptrap, and as before, the rear half of his shell is removed to form a shoulder-mounted shield, which doubles as the combined mode chest. I will say that half shell is quite back heavy, 
so it has a rather problematic propensity for tumbling over. And I would recommend being especially careful with some of the sparkly green plastic as it's quite fragile in places. Still, treat him with a bit of care and Half Shell more than makes up for it both in terms of his good looks and his play value, with a head sculpt that just oozes charm. His colour scheme manages to make him feel very different to Snaptrap, despite there being no actual variations in the mould. As far as combiner bots go, this is one of my favourite designs. As a set, it's really hard to argue with your lot here, as the Seacons come together beautifully to make a rather special assembly of aquatic aggressors. Ultimately though, the main draw on offer is always going to be that combined form, and for good reason, just look at it after all. The colour scheme works wonderfully well when you put all five robots together, with the green hands and feet and especially the nicely painted chest plate all helping to serve up a look that just cannot be ignored. Underwater antagonist realness. He's got gills for days. Without a doubt, one of the finest aspects of the full God Neptune form is the head sculpt, which manages to make the most of that moulded detail by applying some stunning paint to really bring out the features on offer. Dare I say it actually looks better than the original? Because it does. Half Shell Sword again forms the main source of armament on offer here, with no guns in sight and the original six team member target master gone AWOL but it matters not a jot. God Neptune still appears ready for battle and looks suitably intimidating. It's not hard to see why this set has become so desirable in the years since its release, compounded by the fact that it doesn't crop up all that often in very good condition. If you can find yourself a nice minty copy, then I would wholeheartedly recommend it. For my part, I wasn't even looking to start collecting the Beast Wars second line in any fashion but this is such a well done use of an already tremendous mould that I couldn't pass it up when the opportunity presented. Even if you already have Piranicon in your lineup, there's still something to be said for God Neptune alongside him. The colour schemes complement each other in a rather extraordinary fashion. And if you don't own this mould at all, well, I'd encourage you to give it a go at some point if indeed you have the chance, although perhaps the upcoming modern version will take your fancy instead. It's up to you. So there you go, that's just about everything you need to know about the Beast Wars Second Seacons and the original God Neptune toy. In case you are thinking of picking up the new generation selects version of the character, I'll go ahead and put a link to TF Source in the video description below, and I'll be putting up a gallery of photos of the vintage toy on their blog as well. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and if you haven't yet, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and you know, maybe check out some of my other videos whilst you're at it. Quick final shout out to everyone who already supports me on Patreon. The details are coming up at the end of the video, so if you would like to do the same, of course, it's very much appreciated. That's it from me, so enjoy the rest of your day. TTFN.